This will be part two of the General Electric built hot point 14S201 or 14S202, not quite sure. This is, like I said, part two. Uh, I hate doing multi-part videos simply because as time progresses, people don't watch all the parts and it turns into a big confusing thing of misunderstanding what's going on because you're not following. I never notice the air traffic noise at this place until I started and now the phone is ringing. Anyway, uh, yeah, I never noticed all of this irritant, background irritants until I was trying to step my game up on these videos. Or where was, what was I thinking about? Okay, part two, multi-part video. In part one, we went through and cleaned up this recap and made sure we got our B plus voltages there. And we got a raster, went through and adjusted the ion trap, played with the centering rings. We still don't know where we're at because all we have is a blank raster. We have nothing coming from the front end, no video, no sound, no IF, no nothing. Found a shorted mixer oscillator tube in the tuner. Changed that out with a known good one. It made absolutely no difference. Today we're gonna go through and we're gonna check a few things and we're gonna start with the IF because it is dead. I rocked the tuner back and forth and it's just a blank dead light on the screen. Nobody is home. So we got a couple ways we can do this. We can inject an IF, a modulated IF signal into the tubes. We might try that. But the first thing I think we're gonna do is do a couple simple voltage checks on the two IF tubes. And I have this tube test adapter which basically allows you to plug the tube into it and then get access to the pins. Uh, the, the issue with these sets are that as you can see, you, you really can't get access to check a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, te the test points do end up coming through these holes. These holes, as you can see that, these holes here are designed to get access to various test points. So that's kind of nice, but they're just basically a blank pad on the board, so there's probably a test probe that snaps in there and taps onto that, which I don't have, so I'll have to figure something out. So let's get it fired up here and we'll do some experimenting. All right, as you can kind of see here, we got just a blank raster. Let me try and adjust the vertical and see if I could get the camera to sync to it. It's very bright out here, so the camera doesn't want to automatically sync to it, but there you can kind of see we got a blank raster. And uh, if I turn the turn the uh, tuner, there's nothing, it's just dead. Also in the first part we tested the two IF tubes. This is the first IF, second IF, and I believe this is the video. So basically what it does is the IF signal comes out of this, uh, the tuner right here, this coax, and it feeds into this tube and then this tube. So you can see uh, where's a pointer? Right here is the coax into the first IF and into the second IF. So first thing I want to do is I want to just check these voltages here, these plate voltages. We should have uh, 130 on pin 5 and 6 and 130 on pin 5 and 6. Have our test adapter there. We're going to power it up We're on pin 5. And we have 160 volts, and now this should drop as the tubes warm up. Okay, so that's pin five. We'll go over here to pin six. 118, 118. We're a little bit low. 
uh, but we did not change a selenium stack in this yet, so I'm not I'm not going to condemn. Uh, you know, 10 volts is no big deal. Let's check this IF tube here. All right, here's checking the second IF tube. It's warming up. Pin five, pin six. So also we had absolutely no audio. Uh, you can hear a hiss and buzzing, you know, the, the vertical noise, the very, very low level vertical noise. But there was no audio like the speaker. Uh, there's nothing coming through here because the IF is tapped off. Actually, the audio comes off the plate of the vertical video output tube. So it's possible the video output tube could be a problem too. Maybe we should check those voltages. All right, now we're on pin nine of the video output tube. And... Pin 9 should be 80 volts. And we have 111, which uh, is kind of, yeah, you know, that is kind of high, isn't it? But if there's no signal coming into it, it might be, it might be that. Oh, and you know what? The contrast might adjust that. So let's take a look. Contrast. There you go. Oh. Boy, something's up with that pot right there. That pot is really flaky. In fact, I wonder if that pot is open. I wonder if that's the problem. Because it looks like as I turn the pot up, the voltage comes up. The voltage goes down, That's and then all of a sudden it just goes like reverses. So let me set that down. Still nothing. Let's take a look at the cathode on that. The cathode would be cathode would be pin eight. Is that right? Pin six. It's like pin six. Okay, nine. It's eight seven six. Let's take a look at this. And we have 1.5 volts, and they call for 0.2 volts, but that could be due to this. Let's turn this. So if I turn the contrast all the way up, yeah, there's... This contrast control is very flaky. But I don't think that's enough to make it completely, completely it is dead as it is. Also, he changed capacitors in here, and we had some that were the wrong values. Uh, we could have an issue with that 0 .047 there. If that 047 was non-existent, then um, it's possible that the signal signal would get through. Well, we can check that by injecting uh, composite video into this test point here. 
And you can see where they show test point B, which is, would be that hole right there. So we need to figure out how to uh, get into that and tap to that. Here's a new toy I ordered, and this is a Syncor VG91. This kind of came highly praised by AM Station Engineer, and the reason why I bought this is there's a second part to this, which I found at the ham swap meet, that um, basically generates all of the uh, tests for the horizontal sweep circuit and vertical sweep circuit. So this thing is kind of like a modern... Um, uh, what is that? That old B and K uh, television analyst. Anyway, it's got IF output, RF output, and raw video output. So I'm feeding the raw video output into pin seven of the tube there, which is the cathode. And I have this thing on circle. And I don't know if you can see it there, but we have video with no horizontal lock and that might be a whole different problem so what I'm kinda curious about is I have it injected in there to pin 7 I'd like to go back to here and see if this cap is working. So I guess what I have to do is kind of just disconnect this and stick it in this hole here and hope I don't blow my new generator up. Oh man, I can't do this. This is... Uh, and yes, we do appear to have it there. Let me do that. So that would indicate that this capacitor here is good. I wonder where they pull, if this is where they pull the sink. Where do they pull the sink? Here's the sink. So they pull the sink off of right here. So it should be have horizontal lock, I would think, with just a raw video signal. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here to pin one and feed the IF uh, out of this into pin 1. Alright, I'm injecting 45.75 video IF into pin 1 of the second IF tube and I have absolutely nothing. And that is kind of odd. So I'm injecting into here. I was injecting raw video into here and we had it. I'm injecting into here and we have nothing. Now I'm injecting it into the tuner and I still have nothing. You know, I'm not... I would have to admit I'm not 100% familiar with this machine. I don't even know for absolute sure that it's working. Uh, there... It does work. I have one of these televisions, the GE, and I'm thinking about pulling it out and doing this test on it just to familiarize myself more with the VG91 than anything. So this is made for solid state equipment and tubes might have a whole lot bigger of a signal. This is probably putting out about a half a volt right now. Let me see if I could find my GE and we'll inject it into my GE and see what kind of results we get. All right, here's having a look at my GE. You'll notice it's definitely a lot dustier inside, but it's been fully recapped and working. Feeding the IF signal into the tuner. And look at what we got here. So, uh, that one down there, let's, let's try feeding it into the second IF, um, and see what we get. Alright, I'm in the second IF there, set's warming up. And 
And we really don't see much of any, well, there we go. There we go, there it is, very light. Vertical brightness, you know, the, the knobs are in a different spot on the GE. Yeah, there we go. So that's into the second IF. And if I feed the video into this right here, I get a nice circle with full horizontal lock. So, what does that tell us? What does this tell us? Well, and doing this using another set is kind of cheating. But the only reason why I did it is because I wasn't that familiar with this new piece of equipment. So we know now that the 40, that the IF output out of this is more than enough to trigger the, the uh, to feed into the tubes. What I should do is I should try and feed it into the plate, but I don't want to, maybe I do try it through a capacitor because I don't want to apply that kind of voltage, plate voltage to this. But... So what we have is on both sets, if we feed raw video into point B, we have uh, a picture. Except on the hot point, we do not have horizontal lock, which that's a whole nother problem. And if we feed IF into here, we don't have it on the hot point and we do have it on the GE. So the problem exists between here and here. It exists right here. So I guess the next step would be to try and inject it into pin 5 through a capacitor and see if it's enough to show anything. And uh, you know, it's starting to it's starting to look like maybe this uh, diode. I've seen those go bad. Now what I'm doing on my GE is I'm feeding, you can see the capacitor there, I'm feeding directly into the plate. And I don't know if it'll show up on, on camera, but you can just barely see the outline here of the, of the circle there. So, I'm going to bring the hot point back and we'll try feeding into the plate of the hot point. The, the voltage output on this is not near high enough compared to what comes off of the plate of that second IF tube. And if anybody wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the GE and the hot point, the GE is on the right with the wires coiled up on top of it. The hot point's on the left. You'll see they basically look the same except some minor differences. So is everybody enjoying their little educational GE video here? We're on the plate now of the hot point. Hey, I don't know what I'm doing. This is just all experimentation. And there is just nothing there. I mean, it is nothing. There's nothing there. This contrast control is shot. This is going to be a problem. Um. There is nothing there. So, we have action if we put video here. We have no action if we put uh, 45.75 megahertz there. So the problem has got to be in here somewhere. And unless there was some type of vandalism or wire cut or crack circuit board or something 
this diode is the only thing that's in there. I don't, I don't see what else could be in there. But then after the diode, we still have the problem of why isn't the horizontal sinking? The horizontal should be locking. Uh, I guess the next step is to pull the chassis out and inspect inspect what's in this can here. This is going to be inside something. So of course the only way to get access to this thing to work on it is to pull the whole damn thing apart again and um, yeah I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that diode is inside here and the four letter words are about to start flowing so I better pause the camera and that diode is in fact inside that can uh, or was it right there <laughs> the diode is in this can and the can is soldered to this board which he couldn't even get out to recap. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well I had a bit of a premature meltdown there. Would you believe that this this uh, apparatus here has uh, little clips little spring-loaded clips that pop out like a distributor cap exactly like a distributor cap so anyway that's got to be the diode right there this black thing and um, there might actually be enough access here to change this without uh, really uh, Clarko twerculating the chassis so I guess I could ohm it. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at the schematic. Is there anything... Uh, probably going to have to disconnect one side of it. That's isolated there. It's not really isolated because you got those resistors right there. So I think we might have to disconnect it. Alright, this just keeps getting more and more interesting. I checked the diode. The diode is dead. It's open. It's not measuring anything in either direction. And if you take a look at this, one one lead of the diode is tied to ground which it is and then the other side goes to this little coil here which is this coil right here so then from that coil it connects to another coil which is this weird looking thing right here and then that thing connects down here to this video peaking coil. Well, if I check to here, to this side of this video peaking coil, which is L11, I get two and a half ohms. Okay, well, it doesn't give us specifications for, the, uh, for, for these coils. But then if I come over here, it connects to this video peaking coil, then to this coil here. So if I come to the other side of this thing, it's dead open. It's gone. It's just nobody home. So then maybe if I come to here, and we'll check this video peaking coil, it's measuring about 5 ohms. Well, that's what it says, 5.2 ohms. So this one is just wide open wide open nobody home there so I don't know if the diode is bad or not it's it it's not measuring anything in either direction with the diode check so I'm not sure but I know one thing this video peaking coil right here 
This is gone. It's wide open. All right, here it is right here. L11 series peaking coil. 5.6 micro henrys. Now I would think I could probably get something like that. I wonder if my local guy has something like that. 5.6 micro henry coil. I guess I could just bypass it and at least it would let video through, but I'm not sure. I am not sure. And the interesting thing is this video peaking coil right here is accessible via these two holes right there. So what I'm tempted to do is stick the chassis back in and we'll just jump it. I'm not sure if the diode's good or not. The diode measures dead open, like there's nobody home. On ohms or on diode check, it's just open. So I don't know if maybe something surged back through here and popped the diode in the coil. I don't know. Okay, so it appears that even with the coil bypassed, we have no activity here, nothing at all. So I guess the diode has to be fried. Um, geez, that's interesting. I wonder, I wonder what happened there, how that happened. Somehow some voltage had to get in there and cook that stuff because it's pretty isolated. Maybe the capacitor that was in there prior shorted or maybe the Chinese yellow capacitor he put in there is shorted. I have like zero faith in those yellow, uh, cheap yellow Radio Express uh, capacitors. I've seen them shorted right out of the box. Right, I pulled the TV apart once again and I stuck a one, I just paralleled, you could see it there, a 1N60P shot key diode. Um, and now I'm checking, I was just ohming stuff out, and now I'm checking and this stupid thing is, is 20 ohms. So uh, I don't know what's going on here. I'm, uh, maybe this thing has gotten flaky or something at the ends when I moved it around it it uh, started conducting I don't know all right well it looks like we might have some goodness here with the new detector diode stuffed in there got so much This is usually what it looks like when the detector diode is bad. You get something like this. But here I can't I can't dial the horizontal in. And I think the vertical is way off too, but I'm not really sure. But at least it's working now. All right, I know this is not showing, it's too bright out here, but there is no horizontal sink, and I can't tell if there's any vertical sink either. Um, yeah, it looks like there is vertical sink. But I can't, I can't stop the rolling, even if I get in here and tweak on the uh, coil, I can't, I can slow it down but I can't stop it. So, we've got more problems here.
Yeah, there is no horizontal sync signal. It's not getting through, so um, let's check the sound out. Yeah, there's definitely some activity there. So... Is working. Uh, let's try and inject into the tuner. Well, I'm on channel two here. So I, I changed it to channel three. Let's see, we'll go to channel four. So this this thing is, I mean, it's working. I, I guess I could try putting the shorted tube back in there for the entertainment value. And it works just as good with the tube that tested shorted and leaky and grid leakage and all of that as it did with the good tube. So there you go. Okay, uh, this thing has one of these double um, germanium diodes in it. No, those are not germanium, they're um, uh, brain death. The airplane is sucking the intelligence, uh, what little is left out of the brain. Uh, selenium, that, the, the, these are seleniums and these are always bad. And I replace that with a, a shot key, a shot key TO220 rectifier out of like a switching mode power supply, high speed shot key diodes. And it usually fixes it, makes the horizontal rock solid, better than it was from the factory. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this off as uh, part two of the general electric hot point uh, television restoration we we have to deal with this diode up here and this potentially flaky peaking coil and we have to deal with the horizontal lock which is most likely this this thing right here this phase detector diode so this will be part two probably be a couple more weeks and we'll check out part three um, Stand by for more insanity. According to the schematic, this thing right here is the double diode, the phase detector diode, and I can't say I've ever seen one that looked like that. Um, usually I like to diagnose and repair, but in the case of these phase detector selenium diodes and the problem we have here with the thing rolling, horizontally from side to side. Uh, I just gonna shotgun that thing with a couple of um, shot key high speed, high, high fast recovery high speed diodes. You don't want to use like one in 4000 series diodes in there, although you can. But I'm just gonna pull some out of a switching mode power supply that spec out good. They'll never go bad again. And um, I'm going to have to pull this board off to change them. So at least I don't, yeah, you can't get to it from the back here. So, uh, yeah, part two, I'm sorry, part three. Stay tuned for part three, and we'll start off with this clip, replacing this in an overview, and then we'll continue on. But this thing's going to have to be changed, too.